Okay, so here we are. Uh, my name is Anthony Barra. I'm here with Nikolai Barasov. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you. And uh, we're going to have a conversation with each other, hopefully for the interest of some people out there. And we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to call something up on the screen real quick. Uh, can you see that, Nikolai? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. So I just want to give a little brief context to this meeting. And uh, so I wrote a, a short a short paper trying to summarize uh, two of Nikolai's lectures that I found really interesting. And <laughs> in the process of doing that, I realized I had huge gaps in my knowledge. I thought it would be half the length. I was trying to be really efficient and sharp, yeah. and I sort of failed. Um, yeah. But let me scroll down. So our chat tonight um, is aimed at this target audience, anyone who's looking to better understand Lev Vygotsky's cultural historical theory, anybody who's looking to tr try it out, uh, experiment with it, play around with it, anyone who's looking to expand their repertoire of teaching and learning strategies. Vygotsky is certainly not the only game in town. Um, anybody who's looking to help other people develop, teachers, parents, uh, personal development coaches, whoever it may be. And Nicola, how do you feel about these main targets of understanding? I'm hoping that no, I absolutely our, our audience to you can and, walk away. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, I'm I'm so grateful you did it. Uh, I, I like it. Thank you very much for preparing this uh, okay. uh, this uh, paper, this document, which looks Wonderful. fantastic, fantastic from my point of view. Okay, great. So let's let's begin. Uh, let's begin. Yeah. Can you maybe you could start off just with a little story or background? Why is why is this theory, which is 90, 100 years old, why is it why is it still so relevant, so popular, yeah. so yeah. meaningful? If it is, or 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 has its or has its heyday come and gone? Yeah, this is a well. Yeah, this question is a very interesting question because uh, uh, on one hand, nowadays. Everybody who speaks about Vygotsky speaks about Vygotsky as one of the superstars, like mm. in, in line with Piaget, Freud, Vygotsky, all these big, 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 big names. And, and that's on one hand. On the other hand, uh, the problem with cultural historical theory is that uh, in Russia and in the, in the West, for many years, uh, only several only several sources of Vygotsky's uh, texts were available. Not all, not all uh, Vygotsky's texts in original sources. And because only several texts were available, uh, the understanding of Vygotsky theory was built on this limited amount of sources. And there were lots of illusions about that, a lot of misunderstandings, because if you see, or maybe fragments, you can hardly understand the, 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 the whole picture. So it's like a puzzle, you know, when, when, when half, of the, uh, half of the parts of the puzzle is absent, you will not be able to see the whole picture. And this, and this interpretation of Vygotsky's ideas were, uh, uh, was created and, and still dominates. The problem is that recently, I'm, by saying recently, I mean, last 25 years, we have a lot of new uh, Vygotsky texts available, published, including six volumes of collected works, including lots of uh, uh, previously unknown texts. It was a kind of new reality with Vygotsky's uh, original text. But the problem is that people still interpret Vygotsky according to those very limited and very uh, superficial uh, understanding which was created 30, 35 years ago based on the limited. So is that, I guess the momentum from that time is just yeah, sort of, yeah. it's, too, so, it's too fast. So, yeah, yeah. And, okay, so part, I imagine and, part, and, part of your, and, part of your this, project is to push back yeah, against that momentum. Yes, yeah, so, and, and what I'm doing, and not only me, mm. several people, what we are, we are trying to do, we are trying to re, uh, how to say, to improve this, uh, existing understanding to make it better to make it deeper based on uh on the opportunity to include to our understanding all these new original texts so 
new understanding of Vygotsky, which uh, probably will be based on the new reality when we have all main Vygotsky texts now available in Russian and even becoming available in English. So because of this new reality, we need to work hard to make our understanding deeper. I'm not criticizing the existing model. This mm -hmm. model is okay. It was the best model available, the best available, but now it's not the best because we have much more available sources. This is the way I'm, I'm, I'm doing. But I'm not answering your question yet, Anthony. Your question was why it's still so, so, so important. Yeah, but, but, even, but even before you answer, I, I just want to interject. So, uh, so I feel a little fortunate, and I guess whoever watches this is fortunate that we, you, I guess you can contrast the existing model or with the updated model as far as it's updated so far and would you say would, the, uh, would, would you say the updated say, model is going I, I, well i would even no no i would even say not updated but upgraded okay okay <laughs> better okay and, and, yeah, yeah, and are you yeah. pretty confident about that statement is it going well the upgrade uh, yeah i i see uh, several attempts of mm. coming back to make uh, uh underst the understanding of Vygotsky's theory deeper First of all, is a book of Ronald Miller. Then I can mention Manolis da Fermos. I'm doing something about that. There is a kind of there is a kind of um, tendency at the moment. But on the other hand, there is a huge, huge, huge interest to Vygotsky's ideas, not only in academia. In academia, uh, by the way, academia maybe is not too much interested now because we, they are very happy with the existing models and it works. But I see the interest to Vygotsky from students, teachers, parents, these uh, people who are really doing uh, the job, who are really working with children, children, different countries, different cultures, different social, cultural, economical backgrounds. So, and among those people, uh, uh, the interest to Vygotsky theory is now becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, so to say, greater and greater and greater. And I, I see this clearly because uh, we should not forget about one important thing. Vygotsky was not a guy who was sitting in a library and creating his theory academically. First, first and foremost, first of all, Vygotsky was a practical worker. He was involved in a lot of educational projects in, in the Soviet Union, in, in post-revolutionary Russia. So, uh, he was working with uh, defectology. This is the discipline about special education. Mm -hmm. He was working in pedology. Pedology is a is a, a holistic, uh, uh, holistic uh, the science of the holistic understanding of child development. He was working in building a new system of education in the Soviet Union. So he was working in a clinical psychology. He was working in a, in a educational psychology. He was just trying trying to create a system of how to support the uh, educational system in the Soviet Union. So all his studies were very practically oriented. And this is important. He made his academic and experimental studies to support, to find the ways how to make the education, the system of education better for everyone, for children, uh, with uh, special needs, with children with special uh, uh, backgrounds, and so on and so on. This is important. Yeah. And, that, and therefore, because of this practical orientation of his findings, it becomes very attractive to peop for, for people who are working with uh, children. Sorry, I have to interrupt. Sure. So we, we can make a director's cut here, right? Yes, so, yes. and, and, and uh, I also started my career as a teacher. I was a school teacher in, in mm -hmm. Soviet Union for some years. And that was my, my starting point. And the point was that, uh, and the point was that Vygotsky discovered the fundamental laws of cultural mm -hmm. development of human beings. Cultural historical theory is the theory of development of higher psychological functions. And this development is 
social cultural genesis. This is the central, this is the central point of this, this theory. And okay, because so of this... We have, hmm? to stop, we have to stop and just define genesis real quick, because I know that... Uh, that's... Genesis, genesis <clears throat> is, uh, is the word which is coming from Latin or Greek, I, I, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure, but it means, literally it means development. Yeah, okay. Genesis means development, and it was quite, quite popular at the time. For example, for example, Piaget was speaking about development. And do you know, Anthony, how, uh, what, is, what was the title, what was the name of Piagetian theory? Genetical epistemology. Okay. <laughs> so, ge genetic, 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 genetical means development. So, these are synonyms. So, it's, not about, it's not about biology, it's not about genesis. Yeah, right. It's mm. not about genetics. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right. Now, is it correct that Vygotsky was, he sort of went further back in the developmental process than most of his colleagues? Like, like basically he was, he was suggesting that development starts even before the individual. Like, like if he was, he was trying to reconstruct the entire process, right? Of, of yeah. development. Yeah, yeah. What I'm, that, what, that's what one I'm, of the things that yeah, made him different, yes? Or, yeah, or, yeah. And what I'm saying is that Vygotsky probably was the first in the 20th century who separated two two things learning and development okay. if you if you if you take his thinking and speech i think it's chapter chapter two but i might be wrong he begins the chapter with this which explain explaining what's the difference between learning and development for some people learning and development is the same for some people learning and development are absolutely separate things but he was the first trying to understand the dialectical, dialectical relationship between learning and development. For example, this one of the examples. Yeah, please. And, and, and the point is that every, every teacher knows this, every parent knows this, that children, especially in 21st century, they might learn a lot. They know a lot. They learn from internet or from Wikipedia. Learning is everywhere nowadays, right? early literacy early numeracy learning 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 but every parent understands that uh, not every learning brings changes to development of the child children might know a lot have a lot of knowledge but their intellectual development is not as high as their knowledge so the idea that the more the, the child knows the better the child understands is not is not true so information so, information doesn't make us smarter that's, mm. that's that's the point that's the point and so i have two questions so so one he was able to distinguish learning from development and i'd like to hear a little bit about what his distinguishing markers were and Secondly, is, uh, is there a characteristic of development that's different from learning? Like, is there something that leads to development? That, okay. That, that's yeah, typical and, learning, like my Yeah, learn. yeah, and okay, I can, I can give an example. Mm -hmm. the, it, was a, it was a research published recently, I think it's in Britain or in, I'm not sure, but the research was about uh, the overall IQ in European countries, IQ of teenagers. Mm. So the, 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 the data shows that comparing to what happened 50 years ago, the, I, the overall IQ level of teenagers in Europe is lower than it was 50 years ago. Lower. The level of information of the children, teenagers, available for teenagers now, mm -hmm. it's in one million times more than it was 50 years ago, right? They know much more. They have much more sources of information. They have internet. Mm -hmm. They learn a lot, but IQ, IQ is not a good criteria, but however, it's a kind of indication. Even not being absolutely correct, it's now lower than it was. What does it mean? Children know more, but their thinking 
is less developed as, as it was 50 years ago. It looks like, like a very paradoxical because thinking is different from knowing. You and me and everybody, we might know a lot of things without understanding these things. Mm. Huh? Uh, but thinking is about understanding. Thinking is about how to use the information. Thinking is, is about how to apply the information to solve the problems. So this is what thinking is about. When I have a problem, I, I start to think. There is a problem. I have to find a way to resolve the problem. And I begin to think. If I, if I feel that I cannot solve the problem, I come to my friends, <laughs> I come to experts, ask them. And we begin to think collectively, all this, all this, all this stuff. So what I'm saying is that, that learning, learning does not automatically gu guarantee the development, intellectual development or social, emotional, or whatever. Mm. So there is a, com there is a complex dialectical, co complex dialectical relationship. I'm not going to discuss this relationship now. Mm -hmm. So just everybody can go to the library, take volume one thinking and speech and read it's all there what i'm saying is that uh Vygotsky, Vygotsky said it 100 years ago almost 100 years ago but now after 100 years ago we begin to understand how right he was saying that uh, learning and development are not just uh directly related not every learning makes developmental changes and now we see a lot of evidences about it. So, and the problem is here is that uh, when we speak about Vygotsky to teachers, to parents, to even early childhood educators, what, what they all know, they all know Vygotsky in relation to what? In relation to ZPD, right? Mm -hmm. So ev almost everyone, I don't, I don't know in America, but in Australia, almost everyone doing education, when I, when I say Vygotsky, they say, ah, ZPD. Sure, right? so I mean, I've heard you talk, and others, I've heard you talk and write about the, that very fact. And that I've heard you say things like, Vygotsky's theory is not a box of tools where you can just reach into the box and pick out mm -hmm. whatever tool you want mm -hmm. and use it. Yeah, without mm -hmm. being conscious of every other tool mm -hmm. in the box, mm -hmm. CPD, yeah. for example. So yeah, yeah, let, let me yeah. put this slide. Let me just put this slide back up real quick. Yeah, tell me if you could see it. Um, are you able to see that? Yeah. Okay. So I think it's time for this question, with that in mind, because yeah, but, ZPD yeah, yeah. is a ZPD is a portion of this mm -hmm. theory, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But, is there any way you could walk us through, especially with this target audience? Okay, but before before we yeah. come to ZPD, I want to uh, I want to just to finish what I wanted to say sure. is that so everybody knows this ZPD because it's a kind of slogan now, it's a kind of label. Okay, so for example, when they say Freud or complexes or sexuality or libido, it's the same like Vygotsky or ZPD. It's yeah. like a mantra, but the problem is that. In the Gotsky theory, it is much, much more than GPD. GPD is one of the concepts, which is not even the main concept of the Gotsky. Mm -hmm. The main problem for the Gotsky was to understand what is the cultural historical development of human being. The title of the theory is cultural historical theory. We can call it cultural historical psychological theory of Vygotsky. And the question, the first question is that why it is cultural, why it is historical, why it's psychological? Because for, for us, for people living in 21st century, culture is culture, history is history, psychology is psychology. And what is the frame which unites all these three things. Why it's cultural, why it's cultural historical, why it's cultural historical psychological theory. That's the, that's the first question we have to answer. If we really have a task to understand Vygotsky, we have to formulate the question, why he himself called it cultural historical theory? Why it was so important for him to highlight this cultural, historical, developmental, psychological theory? 
what was the reason for that? And the answer is very simple. It's not about children even, it's about us. It's about you, Anthony Barra, it's about me, Nikolai, it's about everybody, adults. Who we are now psychologically, what type of personalities we are now, you and me and everybody, is a result of our individual, individual history. We all have our individual histories behind us, from our birth to, to today. History, our individual history and our individual cultural environment. You were born in the US, for example, I was born in Soviet Union, somebody was born in Africa and so on. Cultural environment, the first, the first important thing. And culture, including language, in, including all other things, affects the course of our development. But the most important is history. And you, Anthony, me, Nikolai, and everybody, of course, we came through the uh, through the uh, periods of our development, periodization, milestones, crises, like crisis of age one, crisis of age three, crisis of age six, teenager crisis, and so on. But at the same time, we all, you and me and everybody and us, we had in our history some events, some individual crises, individual crises which only which are only related to you and me and everyone. For example, uh, I had in my history, I had to change my uh, my city to live. When I was 11, my family moved from one city to another. It was not a big challenge for my parents, but for me it was a huge challenge because I had to change the city, I had to change the, the friends, I had to change the school and so on and so on and so on. And of course it was affected to on my development right so and if you look on everybody's individual history everybody has uh, individual stories and histories of dramatic collisions dramatic events for example deaths of parents deaths of, of, of grandma and all these all these things so and this is the history and Vygotsky says that, that that who we are now very much depends on our individual histories of, of development and this is absolutely true. This is absolutely correct. So, this, this is, is the. A, huh? this, this is, is why it's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, this is not a blank slate theory, right? This is. Would yeah, you absolutely. Agree, yeah, would you agree um, with. This is a, a formulation from Jonathan Haidt. He says, we're, we're born and that's our first draft, but then it's revised by experience as we live. Does that sound about consistent with this theory? Um, because, well, because, or, or are we to think of ourselves through this theory as a, a product of our experiences with, with no yeah, foundation, yeah. you know, yeah. no, no, no yeah. biological substrate or no, you know, no heredity or anything like that? Yeah, of course we have heredity, of course we yeah. have biological <clears throat> or preconditions and all these things. And of course, because cultural historical theory does not ignore the biological, mm -hmm. uh, physiological things. Of course, they are. We, we, genetics is genetics. We do have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the problem is that all our higher psychological functions, uh, I just call it higher psychological functions, abstract thinking or theoretical thinking, voluntary attention, logical memory, okay, will, all these things are not biologically inherited. They are the products of cultural, social cultural development because they their origins is social environment, and because thus says, and thus can be developed, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and, thus, uh, and thus can yes. be products of instruction. They could be products of learning, yes. products of yes, teaching. yes, absolutely. But again, uh, the problem is that they are products of instruction and, and learning. But the problem is that if learning only corresponds to the child's level of development. If, as a teacher, I only teach children things they already can understand or they can do, it's just an instruction. But if I teach students things they cannot understand by now, but doing something together through explanations, they will be able to understand 
these things with my help in collaboration with others under my guidance in other in in other words if i build my teaching a little bit higher than the level of development the child is now which means that if in my teaching i create a zone of proximal development so the child development uh, uh, starts and and my teaching is a kind of is a kind of ice icebreaker you know <laughs> breaking the ice and begins to lead development yeah and it's easy to see why that's the concept that is the most most associated yeah. with Pegasi because even yes even yeah. here in our conversation it's almost the first one we turn yes to. yes and and why this concept is very popular first of all this concept is very popular because it's very easy to apply it's very simple and very easy to understand and second is uh because it's it's quite it's very practical it's very very practical so uh if you do something together with children show the example doing together then the child can repeat it of himself so this is very practical concept but what i said is that uh, and I agree with Seth Chaplin in, uh, and his paper, he published the paper about zone of proximal development, Seth Chaplin, 2003. He said that we will never be able to understand ZPD without understanding of the whole theory of Vygotsky about mm -hmm. what, what development is. Because you have to understand zone of proximal development, we have to understand what is development. Okay. For, for our audience, which might include pre-service teachers or might include uh, long long working teachers who are only vaguely familiar with Gatsky is there is there any way you could walk through the theory yeah. in, in five to ten minutes do you think that's yeah it's a uh, well uh, uh, and and I certainly want to talk about drama as well uh, yeah uh, we will come to drum a little bit later, but yeah. uh, coming back to ZPD is that from my point of view, from my perspective, from what I know from the literature, from academic literature, <coughs> is that uh, ZPD as a concept uh, being very popular, used everywhere, this concept is still a victim of misunderstanding. Believe me or not, but this is one of the victims of misunderstanding of the real meaning of zona proximal development. And the reason of this misunderstanding, the cause, the, 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 the point, the starting point of misunderstanding, do you know what is? Is incorrect translation. Okay. The definition of zona proximal development was not translated correctly. So what, what was the uh, what was the incomplete understanding compared to the, if, yeah. if I had an incomplete versus a complete understanding, what would those two what would those two things look like? You know, sometimes when you when you because when you because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm assuming that the I'm assuming that just say a classroom teacher, for example, who okay who okay okay, she, okay. I, I, let's I say I, let's say I feel like I understand it and I'm implementing that in my practice. Okay I'm, okay let's let's now play Anthony okay so I will ask you questions and we will answer okay so uh, Vygotsky said said the zone of proximal development is a distance I'm now referring to original definition of CPD from Vygotsky's texts published in 1935 okay. the text is called the problem of mental development of children in the process of learning so and the definition of zpd is first because it says zone of proximal development zpd is a distance distance please note not the difference hmm. okay but the distance distance is a distance is very very literal sense okay is, is the distance between what and what between what i can do without help and mm -hmm. and what I can, what difficult tasks I can do that are above my level with help. Okay, good, very good. So, distances between what what I can do myself and this what I cannot do, but I can do with the help of others or under guidance. This is the distance between these two levels. Mm. This is your understanding, 
and your understanding is completely based on that wrong translation. Mm. And your understanding is completely based on these uh, definitions of CPD available in internet. Wikipedia and others, they say about it. But this is not correct. This is not correct. <laughs> good, good, says, good, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Vygotsky says that CPD is the distance between two levels of development. Mm -hmm. Between, not between what I can do, I cannot, okay. between two levels of development. In this case, two levels of intellectual development. He speaks about but, but, development but, of intellect. Sorry to cut you off. Before you continue, is there mm -hmm. a is there a sort of emotional ZPD or a moral ZPD? Not that we have to before, go down that down that path. I'm just curious. Before before answering these questions, mm -hmm. we have to clarify what ZPD is. Oh, okay. In, in that Vygotsky text, in that Vygotsky's book. He criticizes, he criticizes IQ, but IQ is absolutely intellectual test, right? Mm -hmm. Intellectual coefficient. Oh, he doesn't speak about GPD in social, emotional. He speaks very clearly, okay? Yeah. He says that IQ, IQ tests, they only can measure the actual development of the child. What the child, what, what kind of tasks, intellectual tasks the child can solve individually. That's the okay so this is the first level of development which he called actual level of development how teacher can identify this level what are the tools the teacher can use if for example as a teacher i want to know what is the actual level of development of the child what tools i can use because he says this level can be identified with the help of the intellectual tasks the child can solve independently, individually. And Vygotsky continues, zonal proximal development is the distance between level of actual development, this is the first level, which might be identified with the help, might be identified with the help of the, of the tasks, of the problems. Vygotsky mm, doesn't use the word problem, he was to use the word tasks, but they are intellectual tasks. You know? The yeah. child can solve individually and the second level is level of possible development or potential development as a teacher as a teacher i want to know not only child's actual level with the help of the tasks the child can solve individually i i want to know their potential level what are the tools to identify this second level i give them the tasks children the task they cannot they are not able to solve individually but they can solve under my guidance and in collaboration with others so my first task and Vygotsky writes about it my first task as a researcher as a teacher as an instructor is to identify the level of actual development by giving them the tasks okay i give the task the child solves the task I tick the box. Then my second task is to identify the level of child's potential development. The tasks he cannot or she cannot solve him or herself, but can solve with my help, under my guidance in and in collaboration. I have to I have to find this level very properly because if if my task is too high even though it's under guidance, the child is unable. So I have to reduce. So my task, task one, I identify actual level. Task two, I identify potential level. I'm using, I'm identifying this with the help of the task and this with the help of the task, okay? And only after that, I, I begin to think about what are my teaching strategies? How can I, how can I teach the child to help him to make his potential level the actual one. I create a pedagogy supporting every child having their potential level today we will become actual level tomorrow. Mm. But I can only do this after I have clear picture about the actual level and their potential level. 
For this, I need this diagnostical method. And Dugotsky says the ZPD is a diagnostical method, which opens fantastic opportunities to build teaching learning strategies which will create zone of proximal development, which will support the child's development. Because what the child can do in cooperation with us, the child will be able to do tomorrow. So the difference is not about what child can do and what child cannot do. The, there is a difference between two levels of development. And the tasks the child can do, the child cannot do, are only tools to identify these levels. Mm -hmm. It's not difference between the tasks. It's difference between two levels which can be identified with the help of these tasks. And the most important point is that why we have to identify these two levels? Why? Because, as Vygotsky says, level of actual development indicates those intellectual functions of the children which are already developed but level of potential development indicates those intellectual functions of the children which are not developed yet, which are in a, in a process of development. And Vygotsky even uses saying that this level indicates fruits of development. This level indicates buds or flowers of development. So ZPD is the distance between two intellectual levels. Which, which indicate functions which are already developed and which are in the process of development. And these two levels can be only identified by certain tasks I give to the child. So if, if, so if you don't know with this top, if you don't know this level, yeah. and, you, and you're, you see the child making progress, watch, if you see the child making progress from here to here, possible that no progress was made because yeah 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 yeah, yeah. because you or, don't know you don't or, know where this you don't yeah, know where the top is yeah 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 so that's, that's often so, the case that's so, often the case so, in schools yeah, where, yeah, where yeah, you yeah, know a lot yeah. of a lot of yes quote unquote learning yeah is happening yeah, here yeah so and for and because he says for us as researchers we have to find those functions psychological functions child thinking for example uh, which are not developed yet, but which are in the process of development and to support, support this development. So, you see, the, di the distance between two levels is not the distance between what the child can do and what the child cannot. You see the difference? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because my favorite, do you know my favorite example? I made a, well, it was, it was three weeks ago, I, I made a lecture to, to, to professors in Dubai University. And uh, I also started about the ZPD. And they gave me this definition. The distance between what the child can do alone and what the child can do with in, in, in cooperation. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said to them, okay, so uh, I can give you an example. Uh, being in this big, auditorium alone i can destroy one chair i can just crash one one chair but altogether we can crash all the chairs in this room is this a is this a definition of zpd yes because it's a it's, it's a difference between what i can do alone mm -hmm. alone i can i can destroy eliminate uh, uh, one one chair in this room but we together we can do more I cannot destroy all the chairs, but according to this definition, this is absolutely zone of yeah, okay. so that, That's a good way to show the ridiculous. <laughs> so you see, you see how deeper. Uh, un unless, uh, unless, unless your development was graded by your persuasion abilities, because if you can't, if you can only destroy one by yourself, but you could persuade a room full of people to destroy yeah, it in and half. The, the, and and this that's is, a, this that's is, a form of the, development. Yes, absolutely. And this is an example which explains how primitive the definitions are. Mm. If you take this definition, 
distance between what I can do alone and what I can do with the help of others, my example fits 100%. But Vygotsky didn't mean that. He was speaking about the levels of intellectual development of the child. Okay? Can, you take, can you take the chair example and match that more accurately with what Vygotsky intended? No, Vygotsky, it? yeah, that's what I said. Vygotsky says that the tasks, the tasks, which means what child can do alone, yeah. what can deliver, are only tools. Using these tools, we can identify two levels of development of the child, two levels of his intellectual development. These are only tools. They do not determine the level of development. They are only tools to identify these levels. Because as a teacher, as a parent, I might know what the child can do, but I might know, I might have no idea what the child in principle is able to do if we do it together. So, hope. Do you think huh? now is a good time? And I'm just trying to be mindful of the clock as well and mm -hmm. respectful of your time. Do you, no, think, no do you think now is a good time to hit this question? Or should uh, we spend mm -hmm, more time on mm -hmm. the first? Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I will just finish uh, ZPD yeah, sure. just in, in two minutes. So uh, what I'm saying uh, is that uh, the incorrect translation of ZPD, it was not correctly translated. For example, it was translated like uh, level of actual de development determined by the, the tasks the child can do. But determined by the task is not correct. The level of actual development is determined by the level of development of, of child of uh, child's psychological functions, but can be identified with the help of the tasks, as we are identifying the weather looking on the thermometer. The, the task is only a tool. Thermometer is only a tool to identify to identify uh, what is the weather, what is the temperature outside. It's like we can we can we can. Uh, identify the place we are in looking at on, on, on navigator on the map but where we are doesn't depend on the map it's not determined by the map so the translation determined by or determined through creates opportunity to interpret zpd in one million ways so but it's it's a long story what, what i'm saying is that that uh, zpd is one of the victims of uh, of misunderstandings even zpd is not correctly understood okay yeah. So now, your second question was about uh, experimental settings, experimental design. Yeah. The, so the article that I wrote was uh, it was kind of a, it was trying to summarize your five principles for experimental design mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. congruent, um, mm -hmm. you know, with with mm -hmm. CHT. And mm -hmm. I I made the assumption, perhaps incorrectly, that mm -hmm. those same principles can be used in instructional design. So yep. for example, in a classroom, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. an individual yeah. lesson or a unit of instruction yeah. or three, four yeah. weeks. Yeah. So can, uh, can yeah. we review uh, those principles? Yeah, well, uh, look, the story about this principle, well, I want to tell you a story because mm -hmm. cultural historical, okay. So the problem was that, um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, okay, point number one here is very clear that if we take cultural historical theory for our research as a theoretical background, as a theoretical framework, if we consciously, deliberately select cultural historical theory for our research, I mean, for, for psychological research as a, our theoretical framework, mm -hmm. we have no choice. We have to create our experimental study using experimental genetic method or genetic experimental method so because Vygotsky created theory and method at the same time okay, okay. Uh, if you open volume four the book called history of development of higher psychological functions chapter two Vygotsky strictly begins that theory goes together with method method goes together with theory if we take theory as a, our theoretical framework we should take this method out as our experimental framework no choice 
But the problem was that Vygotsky did, did not formulate the concrete requirements for experimental design. In his chapter, he only explained three uh, main characteristics of the method. That's but, it. But if, but if a teacher, say you had 60 minutes, say you had one hour to teach a class yeah. and you wanted to teach that class in, yeah. in congruence, yeah. The theory, and you yeah. wanted to use, and you wanted to use a method yes. that was accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, can that it be was done not, in an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Anthony, it was not created as a method of teaching. It was created as a method of doing experimental research in yeah. psychology. Yeah, that, that was psychology. my other question. Can are the, am I talking so, about two different things here? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I want to clarify that it was created this uh, was, uh, as a research method, okay, right. part of research methodology. So, but uh, he did not make a concrete. Uh, requirements. What I did, I just uh, looked through all the Vygotsky's experiments. I collected everything okay. he published about experiment, just in order to clarify, and I did. So don't call it your principles, it's Vygotsky's principles. Of yes. mm -hmm. So, and the second question is that, can we apply these principles to teaching learning, to learning teaching, to yes. education? And the answer is yes. But of course, we cannot apply them directly because they are directly designed for, uh, for organizing or conducting or designing experimental studies. But we can, we still can use them in our educational uh, settings. But... Uh, and just for the sake of this yeah, section, yeah, I'm just, gonna put them just, up on yeah, the screen. Yeah, in a little bit of different way. Mm -hmm. And the example, uh, I'm not the example about that. The example of using these principles in education was the uh, work of Russian academic uh, Vasily Davidov. Did you hear about Vasily Davidov? Yes. Yeah. So Davidov and Elkonin, they created an educational system for elementary school. Then now, now they're doing a secondary school. They call it the, the theory of developmental education. Theory theory of developmental education, which was based on Vygotsky's principles. And of course, they did not formulate these principles as well, but the roots are in Vygotsky. So there is a, the answer given. So I don't need to give an answer. I just make a reference. The Vygotsky's books are translated in English. And one of the uh, available translation is uh, types of generalization in, 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 in instruction. The book, the book was published in America in 1972. So uh, that's the point. And uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, uh, these principles I have developed for the, to support early career researchers and PhD students to create mm. the experimental design for our PhD studies to be done according to Vygotsky's theoretical framework plus Vygotsky's experimental genetic methods. Not only Got for it. my students, I created it for these principles for, for everybody who seriously wants to apply cultural historical theory as a background, as, as a framework for the, for the yes. exper experimental study. Because the problem is that there is a lot of uh, <clears throat> publica publications about uh, making a research with children using cultural historical as a framework but the experiment itself is not done according to Vygotsky's requirements mm -hmm. which does not correspond with the principle of Vygotsky says that if you use theory as a framework you have to use the methods this method not any other methods and uh, just to support people who really want to apply cultural historical theory seriously and deeply I have developed these principles and uh, why the category, the contradiction, the dramatic event is... is I have a, a, quick, a quick question, let me interrupt. Um, is it wrong for me to say that a classroom lesson or a unit, an instructional unit is experimental because you're trying to, trying to use your best hypothesis for what's going to work best? Yes, it, it depends on how even if there's no control you, group for, you know yeah but uh, yeah there is no control group but look it, you can in do other words, in other words is, is it wrong for me to take these 
five principles, which, as you said, are, are designed for people who are running experiments. Yeah, but look, Anthony, and, you and mm -hmm. move them into a classroom mm -hmm. set. Is that just mm -hmm. a bad move? That I'm no, 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 no. First of all, it depends on on your task. What yeah, <clears throat> what is your task? Uh, I don't say that you should use all of them. Okay. No, no. You can you can take one of these depending on your task. Or you can use two of these, depending on your task, depending on, on your research question, depending on what, what you want, depending on what you, what you are interested in, depending on what are your goals, what are your aims, what you want to, what you want to have at the end. That's the, so it, it might be a combination of one of two principles, depending on the lesson, depending on the task. For, for example, I can give you a little bit of framework about sure. uh, about uh, 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 well how to how to how, how make how we make a lesson, just typical lesson in, in in secondary school. For example, we have a new topic in a lesson, being physics or, or chemistry or science or whatever. So, well, how can we use the principle of buds of development? The principle of buds of development relates to ZPD, of course. So. Uh, uh, at the beginning of the lesson, you give you you give the children this series of of tasks, the problems, to identify their actual level. For for example, okay, uh, well I said that how how we can identify these physical properties of 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 some elements. You give them the task, and you see that they they, they quickly they quickly uh, do. They can do. They, they can solve these tasks quickly. This level of task. You say, okay, good, good. You are great. You are great learners. Now, then, you give them a little bit more difficult task. You you give it to the whole cl class, and you will see that some children are able to solve this task individually. Some children cannot. One hundred percent. You will. You will. You will find two, two or three, two or three children who are okay. They, they, they are, they are able to under, quickly understand. They, they, they catch the idea, but the majority of children still have problems. Then what you do? You say, aha, these children have this level of development. These three children have this level of development. What you do? You say that okay. These three children are becoming your assistants. I said, okay, you take group one, you take group two, you take group three. And the task of these three children is to start collaboratively solve, solve the tasks. They are teaching others how to solve these tasks. But they are not only teaching others. They are building GPDs for others. But your task as a teacher is to guide this process to correct if something goes wrong so you are becoming a guide they are becoming your collaborators and they collaborate with the groups and mm -hmm. and at the, at the end at the end everybody in your, in your classroom is able to solve these tasks individually is that unfair the, is that unfair to the three students that had to become assistants instead of got the ability got instead of getting an opportunity to grow no no because they are taking a new role they are taking a, a role of the leader it's very important they are well what what i did i said that you are laboratory number one laboratory number two laboratory number three and mm -hmm. they're doing laboratory and then they create a report we did this and this and this so and then of course of course the heads of the laboratory they they've got prizes prize prizes for for leading so and they never feel they never feel disappointed why why i'm doing this because at the end of my lesson everybody in the classroom having the same level of development there is no difference anymore uh i don't like i don't like the idea of no difference that's for sure no it's not of course no no difference but at least <laughs> at least no no what i'm saying is that every every child will be able to solve the task individually understood. yeah understood. yeah so because at the beginning only several children were able to solve this task individually now at the end of the lesson everybody can solve the task individually and then next lesson i can bring a new much much higher and much much more difficult task for all of them you see how i of course this is only general model right, right this right. is only a general model but 
But what I'm saying is that it, it, go, it, it is absolutely in correspondence with Vygotsky because Vygotsky okay. said in that definition that level of potential development must, might be identified with the help of the tasks the child can solve under adult guidance and in cooperation with more capable uh, intellectually development under adult guidance and in cooperation but do you know how it was translated or uh, or <laughs> yeah. but originally it was under and is there any way for you to bring in principle two to the same lesson you just described or would it be better to do that yeah of course lesson? of course or should, or should course. we use a new lesson no this is okay. the same lesson let's what go what is what is dramatic event I can Struggle. create I, I can create a lesson in a, in a, in a, in a form of the competition intellectual competition intellectual victory huh? or I can create a kind of play and this tasks is not the tasks I did, but the tasks uh, they get from the journey of some adventure. And the task comes in the form of the dramatic collision because sometimes when we have a task which we need to, to solve, but we understand that we cannot solve the task, what, what do we feel? Frustration, struggle yes uh motivation motivation yeah. sometimes frustration right mm -hmm. sometimes uncertainty so all these characteristics are characteristics of drama it's a dramatic collision it's a collision it's a kind of contradiction with the task which i need and i'm highly motivated to solve the task on the other hand i understand my limits i cannot i cannot solve the task alone so people and people begin to feel intellectually intellectually uh, in how to say intellectually stressed or distressed so these are all characteristics of drama dramatic by drama i mean the collision the, the contradiction between the things i should do and my inability to do this so this is what category means it might be it might be intellectual it might be social it might be emotional so and this is associated with the feeling of uh, uh, what we call perjivanie perjivanie is a complex is a it's not only emotional perjivanie includes elements of thinking volition imagination uh, creativity everything because every drama is associated with the with Perijivani, but it's another story. But I'm collecting that. So no, that's but that's a story. That's a story I'm interested in. Could you continue a little yeah, bit? Yeah, 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 and uh, maybe, maybe later. But okay. But, but why why drama is important? Drama is important because because uh, of uh, of development and development is social cultural process. Every higher psychological function first appears in a form of social relation, as Vygotsky says, in a form of drama, collision, and only being overcome, it becomes the individual uh, high psychological function. And why it should be a collision? Why it should be a drama? The answer is very easy. The, yeah, the answer is very easy. Because dialectically, contradiction is a moving force for development. If you look dialectically from Hegel and Marx perspective, there is no development without contradiction. Contradiction is a moving force for development. Moving force means what? Moving force uh, is the engine, engine of development, contradiction, according to Hegel. So, so development, development is overcoming the contradiction, but it, it's very general philosophical principle. But but, so this is this is potentially the difference between learning and development. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. My level so, of learning. So are you, so yeah. are you suggesting learning without learning without drama of some sort is yeah. not, is not developmental? Yeah, but there are different types of dramas. There might be dramas yeah. that that I, I cannot solve the task and then I I just give up. 
or oh, my dear drama, I cannot solve the task, I need the help. And then together with others, I will find a way to, to solve the problem. And then I will be able to solve the problem in the future on my own. So there are different types of drama. But the point is that it should be a drama. If there is no drama, there is no potential for development. That's the point. That's why Vygotsky says a category twice, category and category. And then he, he highlights it. It's, it's, it's a small drama between people. So, so what, drama. So, so what is... What would drama-free learning be called? You know, just hmm? easy learning, drama-free, no, no particular struggle or contradiction yeah. or emotional event, or yeah, is that yeah, and this, and, and, yeah, that's what that's why I'm I'm saying that dialectically, uh, the okay, what is dialectics? Dialectics is the uh, is the methodology philosophical methodology to study development. So, because dialectics is about development. Dialectic, dialectic is the logic of development. So the deepest understanding of development is dialectical understanding of development. The deepest understanding of any sort of development, historical development, cultural development, psychological development, is dialectical understanding of development. That was one, one of the tasks of Vygotsky. He repeated and repeated and repeated in many places that psychology should apply dialectical method. How to introduce dialectical method to psychology, dialectics in psychology, dialectical psychology. So that was one of his tasks. Because if we create a theory of development, psychological development, the deepest understanding of development is dialectical understanding of development. And, and according to dialectics, contradiction is the engine, the moving force of development. This is dialectical understanding. But what is the form of contradiction in our life? In our life, the form of contradiction is a contradiction between us and somebody's. It's a social, social dramatic events, social dramatic collisions. This is the form of contradiction in our lives. Even though we have intellectual dilemmas, but these intellectual dilemmas do not exist in a, in a, in a universe. They exist only in, a, in our relation with others. If we have a moral dilemma, moral contradiction, does it exist only in our head? No, it exists in our life. It exists in our relations with others, right? Would you agree with that? I think so. So, and you see how Vygotsky applies the general principle of dialectics, the principle of contradiction to understanding psychological development, saying that in our psychological development, the contradictions are contradictions which happen in our life, in our relation with others. Being the debates, debates with my friend yesterday, or being this, uh, I, I visited opera and I was deeply impressed about it, pieces of art, or debates between children. So these are, these are things these are the moving forces. And that's why Vygotsky highlights the dramatic, dramatic aspect. He says, dynamics of personality is drama. Development is dramatical process, full of contradictions and resolving contradictions. Development is not possible without contradictions. That's why the problem of drama, dramatic collisions, dramatic events was so important for him to understand the dialectics of development. Without dialectics, our understanding of development will remain superficial. The deepest understanding of development is dialectical understanding. Dialectical understanding requires two things. To find the basic, the most fundamental contradictions and the most fundamental transformations of quantitative changes into the quality. There are two contradictions and 
the dialectics of quality and quantity. These were things Vygotsky tried to apply to psychology. And cultural historical theory is a result of this application of dialectics into psychology. That's why for people who have no idea about dialectics, it's so difficult to understand Vygotsky mm. because one of the Vygotsky's tasks was to apply general, fundamental, universal principles of dialectics into the very concrete and very uh, specific area, which is called human development or child development. It's one of the things which is lost, which is missed. Contemporary academia, unfortunately, has very, very uh, general understanding of what, what uh, dialectics is. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I count myself amongst that group. It's pretty naive. <laughs> I have very yeah. little, you know, I, I've heard uh, the, cons the conspiracy theory version of dialectics where, the, 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 have you heard like the problem reaction solution concept? Yes, yes, yes. Is that, yes, that's yes, yes. completely unrelated to what we're talking about? Yes, no, no, no. By dialectics, I mean Hegel's. Yeah. Hegel and Marx, of course. Yeah. yeah. And so, so when you were, when you were 11 years old, that was a more intense, uh, that was a more intense disruption. So was, was your rate of development more intense as a result? What I'm trying to say is there, a, is there a correlation between maybe intensity of drama and, and rate of development or, or not? Is that... Well, it's not, it's not, it's not as simple. It's not as easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is in, in general, in general, uh, if we are really, if we really are interested to understand the process of development of the child, if we are really interested to apply cultural historical theory as a tool to understand the process of development of the child, we have to have an idea about what dialectics is. Because having no idea about dialectics, you can hardly apply this theory to this particular field because. Uh, it protects, no, it not protect, it prevents you from uh, being deep. <laughs> because the deepest understanding of development is dialectical understanding. So. If, if you wanted to use drama or some sort of collision or contradiction yes. in the classroom, there are many ways to do it. There are I many imagine. ways. Yeah. For, for I, I, I know this yeah. is recapping a bit. Could, for example, uh -huh. let's let's pretend we're talking to a, a, a future teacher, mm -hmm. and this was a principle that was that she believed was important because drama was one of the precursors for development. Uh -huh. What are some ideas we could give her? Yeah, but it should be no. The idea is that it should be a drama which generates generates development. Not just drama, not just a collision, mm. but the collision which generates the developmental process. It should okay. be devel developmentally potential uh, drama. So, for instance? Oh, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult to give an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for this, for this, the teacher should understand what he or she wants to, to, to get at the end. Okay. Overcoming, over, overcoming this drama, trying to find, trying to find the collectively to find the ways to overcome this drama. To what level of development the children will go? Coming up to our first example, you give them the tasks they cannot solve, but you give can give them the task in a form of the dramatic collision. That 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 if we cannot, if we are not solving, if if this, the problem is not solved, we cannot go further. We could, we could, we could advise that future teacher to be comfortable with frustration though like oh like, yes yes don't be afraid don't be afraid to don't be afraid okay you yeah. you feel you feel frustrated but it's okay let's let's collectively try to find the an answer and in fact maybe even to to seek frustration to yeah that's, yeah that but of course but, but of normalize course. it within reason but but of course uh we have to be very careful about that of course yeah. but then you give the task there are feeling 
small crisis and then and then you immediately start to find the solution and you find the solution so you don't leave them in a in a in a situation that okay we will come tomorrow no no it's not about that so so but but drama drama is very important because dynamics of personality is drama it should be a small drama between people and Vygotsky even said that we should create psychology not in terms of processes but in terms of drama <laughs> with the concepts of drama that was his dream because the drama is the most important in our lives you overcome dramas i overcome dramas and who we are now much more dependent on that how we lived through those dramatic events in our lives we didn't give up we overcome the drama dramas of our life but that drama is still in our history and the way we look on the world now it very much depends on the dramas of our life we overcome right? the way we understand people the way we speak to people depends on the dramas we have we had in our life dramatic collisions events small dramas big dramas that doesn't matter the if you things were, if, if you were this, no no sorry sorry the uh, things we value the things we value very much depends on those dramas of uh, our old system of values sometimes we have to make a moral choices to rebuild our system of values for example we don't value things we valued but now we value things we did not value because it was something dramatic event happened which mm -hmm forced us to think about what is really value in my world you see so and these are things which differentiates us from animals animals even high developed animals like dolphins and chimpanzees and apes they are they have intellect yeah? mm. they have feelings they have memory but they're different from us because we have high psychological functions, we have values, we are humans. It's the highest manifestations of our humanity. And that was the task of Vygotsky. He said that our psychology is a peak psychology, which means our psychology should explain the highest manifestations of human, human humanity, which differentiates us from animals. Do any, animal, also, do any animals have higher mental functions? No, of course not. Okay, I don't know. Yeah. Logical right. memory. Uh, did you ever see the, the animal who is uh, writing a book, for example? No. <laughs> or building a, building a memorial. But there are smarter and dumber animals, yeah? Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, so, but there is a, is it, is it basically, is it like take the smartest animal, right? Yeah. And then go a little higher than that and that's where higher mental functions start yeah or no? yeah. yeah no no animals do not have higher higher mental functions no i know but i'm saying like yeah yeah is 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 human higher mental functions like a little bit above the highest smartest animals? no they are not little bit above they are they are much much higher yeah okay. of course because look our culture our culture is the source of high psychological functions look in america in australia everywhere we have many monuments monuments uh, we have a memorial of anzac here in australia people who died in a second world war in australia and there is a huge memorial why people built this memorial Me memorial it's for memory right for memory then generations of australians will not forget about their grandparents died for freedom and this is the culture and this is our cultural memory this is our higher psychological function which is called cultural memory which does not exist in animals animals do not remember their died uh, parents and grandparents right so but we we humans do why because we are humans because we have cultural memory which is uh much much bigger than biological memory Bi biologically physiologically we can remember all this only small amount of things but our cultural memory is fantastic it's huge mm. huh? and it's intergenerational even so this is this is the example this is the example do do only individual do, do groups develop or only individuals 
can a nation develop? I, I, I can't. You cannot separate. What is the individual? Individual does not exist. Individual only exists being in relation with others, directly or indirectly. Even though you are alone in the island, you are not alone because you, you okay, continue okay, to... But, okay, but for an hour we've been talking about individuals developing. No, 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 and no. No, it's a, it's a very <laughs> elusive to separate individual from the social. I, no, I understand that, that, you know, the mind is not just trapped in the skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. Here. So, again, if you look at dialectically, you but cannot speak can, about... But here, individual... Here. Can, individual let's, can, let's just take, let's take my country for a moment. Uh -huh. My country is in the midst of a, is a, a category, a collision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Is, is, uh, is it likely that there's some sort of development yes. taking place? Yes, and... and Whatever happens with your president, whatever happens mm -hmm. with this situation, impeachment and so on, whatever happens, American nation will be not the same as it was before. It will be different. Discuss that in terms of this theory. Yeah, it will be different. It will never be as it was. Never. Because of the, <laughs> because of the, uh, uh, the scale of the drama, I guess? Yes, it's a yeah. huge social drama yeah. and the nation will be different. It will never be like like it was. No, never. So who? Who? Uh, never mind. It's so the <laughs> this particular drama was not created by any sort of instructor or anything. Does it arise is, organic? Yeah, uh, life. Life is full of dramas. Yeah. Life is a characteristic of life. Because life is life. Living system develop. Living systems develop. And society is a living system which develops. And develop, development goes through drama. Only something which is dead has no dramas. Mm. So, but the ways society overcomes drama might be different. But however, the society will be not as it was before that. So, uh, Anthony, uh, it's now 12. Yes. I, have a I have a suggestion. Okay. If you're okay, we can, we can continue. Uh, uh, maybe tomorrow or whatever, because you still have questions. And yeah. if you're interested, it's, we, can, we, can, we can continue and then you make a addition. Yeah, then we'll cut it down. Okay. Yeah, so I now so. I have to now I have sure. to go because I promised to my to my Absolutely. boy to, to bring Please him to the okay. Please okay, do. so we'll, we'll, take it to, we'll take it to email and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, okay. I'm I'm okay to, to continue. If you're uh, are you okay if you continue this way? Yes. Discussion this way or yes, I think so, yeah. And it might just be part one, part two or something like that. Okay. So are you okay with this? My yes. English is also okay? Perfect. I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm hoping that everything works. So, okay. Uh, good. Please say hello so, to your. Please say hello to your son and uh, thank you. Absolutely. Him for his okay. Okay. Tell thank him you I'm very sorry. Much. No, no problem. No problem. <laughs> so uh, we are now making an intermission. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. okay. Ciao. <laughs> Bye.